with celebrity ghosts. Oh boy, let's see what we got here. Uh, will you stop? Alright, Chelsea Hotel, number five. First built during 1883 and 1884, the Chelsea Hotel in New York was a favorite hub. I had to put my cat out of the room because she kept going right at my going at my hands and my feet. My cat is crazy. <laughs> Note to self, never give the cat catnip. Never imagine a cat going crazy. Like its famous red brick architecture, that is a very nice building. I've never been to the Chelsea Hotel. That is a really nice building, though. So. Yeah, I know. So. <laughs> I got crazy, so do I. By the 40s, the apartment complex went bankrupt. Residents left, and it was picked up and turned into a luxury hotel. Again, I'm dropping by New York. Over the years, it became the home of Bob Dylan, Jimi Hendrix, Andy Warhol, and more. But with theaters and their permissive life so. back in the day, it was no surprise the hotel would become embroiled in questionable matters. Some of its long-term guests died on the property, and many supposedly refused to leave the place even after death. So people died in that building? Here's the thing. My neighbors are home. So here's the thing. If you... If there was like several people who died in a building... Um... Yeah. Why do you stay open... I mean, they named off some of the people like Jimi Hendrix. I mean, Bob Dylan's alive. I I heard Bob Dylan sing. And I know he's old. He's kind of a cynical, he's kind of an asshole to people because he doesn't look at fans when he sings. He doesn't acknowledge them. He just looks at them playing the guitar, you know, and singing. I mean, not really singing, more like mumbling. Or, how does it feel to be on your own? That's kind of how he sings. Like, I heard him sing before. And I mean, he kind of sounds like Marlon Brando when he's mumbling, like, Are you kind of coming on? Like a rolling stone. <laughs> it's like, I heard him sing. And I go like, what the fuck did this dude just say? I mean, he, I don't know how much drugs he did. I mean, shit, I know Keith Richards done so many drugs, it's a miracle he's alive. I'm not being mean, though, I'm just saying. It's kind of the truth. But, when you're mumbling as you sing, And you're so incoherent that people can't understand you. Maybe it's time to retire. Maybe it's time to like pack up the bags and go home. Just my opinion. I feel bad for him though. Kind of. <laughs> But you just need to like retire. You just need to be like 
I don't ever think I could. It's time to go home. I mean, think about it. I mean, there were several people who did a biopic about Bob Dylan. They did the movie I'm Not There. And it had Heath Ledger, Christian Bale, in a film together. I think it was after... I think it was during the same time The Dark Knight came out. It just didn't do great as The Dark Knight. I mean, they played Bob Dylan, but several... They played two different versions of Bob Dylan. Christian Bale plays the preacher, Bob Dylan. Heath Ledger plays the actor, Bob Dylan. It's not a bad movie. And... It's it's one of those films that... I... I don't know if I could recommend it. Because... Mind you, if you're a Bob Dylan fan... And you love Bob Dylan's music... And you love his poetry and all that... This is the film for you. If you don't know who Bob Dylan is... And you like all these actors in it... Same thing for you. But if you don't know what the hell is going on in this film... Don't watch it. <laughs> so... <laughs> anyway... It's it's one of those things. So anyway, let's play this. Punk of quiet quarters of the Chelsea include punk rock basses for the Sex Pistols. Sid Vicious. Oh, Sid Vicious. Seventy-eight. Vicious stayed there with his girlfriend Nancy Spun. Fun fact: Gary Oldman's first movie was he played Sid Vicious, the basis of the band the Sex Pistols. He is good in that film, but that the, the story of its what the hell is that noise? Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. My cat is meowing at the window at the black kitten named Romeo. <laughs> so, <laughs> all of a sudden, I heard like this noise from an anim this animal, and I thought, like, what is that? And then all of a sudden, there's this black kitten just who I named Romeo laying on the table on my porch. My deck, my front deck. He's laying on the table on it. Underneath the sun, all of a sudden, my cat's like crawl, you know, clawing at the window. I had to close the windows because it's like fucking cold outside. He's clawing at the window, meowing. And all of a sudden, he jumps from the table to the chair by my window and doing the same thing to her. That is disturbing. I mean, it's not disturbing as... I gotta tell this story before we can continue on with the Sid Vicious and story. But, yeah. I had a cat named Cooper. I named him after Alice Cooper. And... Ow. Don't you bite me. <laughs> My cat's now back here. Um... Cooper is, he was a very Casanova type cat. And, <laughs> he had several female cats dirty story. It is. Several female cats visiting our house. Because they would show up and meow and meow. And all of a sudden, here comes Cooper out the door strutting. And one night, 
It was a summer night, so we had like the windows open. We didn't have the air running because we didn't need a high electric bill. <laughs> so <laughs> I went in the kitchen to get some water. And I'm walking towards the hallway silently because I didn't want to wake everybody up in the house. So I'm walking silently. All of a sudden, I hear a cat growling. Two cats growling. I'm thinking like, oh shit, Coover brought, Coover's in a fight with a cat. All of a sudden, I turn on the light. Cooper and the female cat are on the kitchen table mating. I'm thinking like, oh shit. And it was the most disturbing thing. It was like... It's like the moment in King of the Hill. Where Hank Hill... Walks in on his mom and her boyfriend doing it on the kitchen table. And... I was disturbed by it. I was disturbed, (laughs) terrified of what I'm seeing. And the next morning, I see claw marks on the table. I am disturbed by it. And I look over and there is my cat laying on the the couch. And he is like oblivious of what, you know, of me looking at him. I didn't need to see it. I didn't want to see it. (laughs) And he's just like, and he looks at me and meows at me because he wants me to pet him. And I'm like, dude, I'm not petting you. You scratched the table. There is cat hair on the, the oranges on the kitchen table. Nobody wanted to see you. Nobody wanted to see that. So my cat, God rest his soul, I love him dearly, was a pervert. I don't want to say this in a mean way, but he was kind of a whore. (laughs) I I I don't know how many kittens he probably fathered over the years. It it just surprises me. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a lot of kids. And somehow, some way, as a conspiracy theorist, the kitten on my table, on my front porch, under laying underneath the sun, is somehow a grandkid of a great grand, great grandkid of Cooper. I wouldn't be surprised because he kind of looks like Cooper. Cooper was a solid black cat with little white on his chest. Just like that kitten. And somehow, someway, Cooper kind of stepped back into my life. (laughs) (laughs) So...
It wouldn't surprise me.